All right, we are out here we're checking out some AMR transducers here. We're uh, comparing a few. This is an inexpensive P66 transducer. It's less than 100 bucks. 5200 kilohertz, and we are setting it to high trick to see what she does. Uh, marking some stuff, and here to the right is an actual chirp dedicated transducer, a real chirp transducer. I think the results are obvious. What a lot of people are doing is they're buying these high expensive top of the line units that have chirp processors built in them. And then the guy at the store tells him that $80 transducer, oh yeah, you can chirp it, no problem, use it for chirp. You can, but you're only going to get a handful of frequencies out of it. If you want the real spectrum of up to 100 frequencies, you have to use a trip transducer. P66, this is a traditional single frequency transducer. And I don't think I need to say much more than just show you that. These dashes right there, just ignore them. We're running two transducers right next to each other so we can get an even competition here. That's why they're interfering, but I don't want to put any interference filters on because it'll squash our return something awful. And we're just drifting here. These are striped bass, probably in the uh, five to ten pound range, maybe a hair smaller. All right, another question that's pretty popular is why do my arches look straight and flat? They don't look like your arches; they look like worms. Whenever you stop your boat. This is where we were stopped. Everything looks like it's a long worm. It's because we were continually marking that fish over and over again because we weren't moving. We're going about three miles an hour now and you can see the difference. Now we got our arches. That's the beam going up the back of the fish and down the other side. Or up and down the air bladder. Just stop it now. The P66. I mean, it showed it when we were stopped, but as soon as we started moving, everything turned to this versus that. We got more of the same here. Same P66 set on high chirp. This is a 275 high low chirp transducer. It's worth it to get a chirp transducer. You don't have to get a $2,000 transducer. They make some really good ones for about 275 All right, same transducers. Now I'm going to put them both in 200 kilohertz and see what we got. That's green spot right there. I can see all that power. Yeah, there's a, something coming up to take a look. Remember to ignore these dashes. I don't want to put any interference filters on, so that's why those dashes are there. We're using two transducers, that's why. We're sitting dead still out here. We have the anchor lock on and the motor guide. And we had three marks there. Doesn't do too bad though. Didn't show those fish at all. Though. Uh, this one act definitely performs better when it's set to single frequency, what it's really designed for. And now we're going to see what that 200 looks like compared to chirp. Let's compare them all to the high chirp. What we got here is we set our chirp transducer to high chirp. We got all kinds of good life here. And our P66 is set at 200 kilohertz. I mean, it's got some returns there. Uh, two different worlds though, you know, we got awesome separation, we can kind of count them up if we want to. Um, if you have a single frequency transducer like a 200 slash 50 or a 83 slash 200, I would leave them in those single frequencies, that's where they're meant to work. You know, that's where the quality is and they definitely perform their best when you use them the way they're meant to be used. I would use them in single frequency. Setting the chirp doesn't do anything really that I see. Uh, I think it hinders the performance really. You know? This mark here is just above 70 feet, 70 feet and look, there's nothing there. It completely missed that mark. That's probably the best mark in, on the screen right there. Yes sir. You can see our uh, thermocline setting up already. See that? Solid band. Perfect! 
Perfect scenario. 200 kilohertz, P66, one, two, three. Look at that stack. That stack. That is a big stack. We can count them babies up where. Yeah. And we are set up here. We are uh, spot locked here, so anchor locked. One of these. Th one of my boys here is going to bring one up and show you what they look like in person. Ooh, something's coming up. Or is that your spoon? No, they one and followed it up. Yeah. That was my spoon going mm -hmm. up and that took out his attention right there. All right, a couple fish hanging here. We're staying still. Uh, fish came up and looked at the bait and went down. The only reason I know he came up is because on the trip side I saw him come up. But I didn't see it here on a single 200 kilohertz. He's buttoned up. He's on the old one foot. Oh, oh no. Oh, come back. oh, that was his brother following him. <laughs> there were two chasing that thing. You know it. That's a good fish. He's green as heck, too. <laughs> oh, I'll net it. I'll net it. I'll net it. She's going to take a second. You just, you just hooked her here. You missed man. it. Come back and got it. I mean, <laughs> come on. That's a good fish. You don't think it was a second fish? I don't know. Just peel it off when you get home. All right, let's see what the lower frequencies look. If we're gonna compare apples to apples on everything, let's see, 50. And 50. A single frequency for both. It's typically for deeper water, but it gives you a wider cone as well. Good fish, brother. Thank you. So here you go, 50 kilohertz on the P66 to show me nothing at all. And the uh, 275 trip transducers even set single frequency is really kicking but big difference. Wow, what a difference. Oh wow. Big difference, That's right? Horrible. 50? <laughs> terrible depth. Brutal and faster drag. <laughs> <laughs> Big fish it's out. Not, it's over there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know how this 20 year old break. I would get down here and I got about eight transducers. <laughs>